Hey, hey. Welcome to our speech today. Um, today, Peter and me, uh, we will talk about um, global SEO. So how you can scale SEO in a big corporate. Uh, so it's Henkel. Maybe you know Henkel more from the cus cus uh, consumer brands like Schwarzkopf, Sios, Patex, um, Loctite. So a lot of different brands. Um, and today we would like to guide you through the process we were working since 2018, 2018, 2019. 2018. Um, and where we started to digitalize the whole customer journey in terms of how to reach the users within search. And before we start about uh, our presentation, what you should take as a, as a takeaway today is how to scale SEO globally. Um, we do it now for 33 markets or websites. Over 33, I believe. Yeah, yes. something like this. So quite a lot of websites we are working on uh, in various markets, various languages. Um, and first of all, we would like to answer the question, why? The big why. Why should you invest in SEO? Why is SEO a really sustainable channel for your digital marketing um, team or your digital marketing strategy? And when we have a look at SEO and where the consumer's journey begins, and you ask yourself when you start to search for something or you, you need to, to answer a question, you need to, to get something done, either you ask your family, your friends, or you go to Google. And this is what we have seen as well for, for Henkel and for all the Henkel brands. Okay, so what we have seen that 68% of all adults start the customer journey within search. So 68% of of people start to use literally Google to solve a problem. So either they are looking for a solution, they are looking for a product, um, they, they have a problem and, and trying to get information how to solve things. And when we have a look for all the Henkel brands, we see that a lot of people are looking for various questions they may have. It could be to fix something, to glue something, something broke up, but even when you have a look on, on all the other brands Henkel is, is, is offering in the market, you also see that for, for the beauty care or for the laundry section, also people are looking for questions, information, for everything they would like to know. And so this is mainly where the customer journey begins. And as long as you understand how your uh, target group is searching, how your customers are searching, I would say it's more than just keywords, we could talk about questions they may have, the needs they might have, problems they may have, and this is exactly what we need to answer as a brand. So as long as we understand what our target group is searching for, we can provide the right content and uh, make sure that we can answer the questions, the needs, uh, and the problems, or solve the problems they may have. And this is exactly what we have started in 2019 to get a better understanding per market um, of the local needs of the local search behavior to answer those problems with better content, with optimized content, and with our brand pages. And that's the main question you should start with. So it's not about your brand, it's always about your customers. And you need to understand what your customers are looking for. And one tool you can use for this is answerthepublic.com. It's more like a tooltip. Uh, you can use it for free, I think like five, uh, five queries a day, but it's, it's enough to, uh, you should also think of the paid subscription because you get a lot of user questions and customer questions out of a single word. And when we talk about to glue something, when you talk about to glue something, we definitely see that people are looking for how to glue shoes, how to glue, glue glass, how to glue wood. So they have a lot of plenty of questions, and if we are... A, a company selling adhesives, selling glue, that's for sure the question we should answer on our brand side, website to make sure that our customers keep us in mind and next time when they're uh, uh, on, on, on an offline shopping event so that they buy our products instead of, of other products. So I would say that's like the first step you should take, not to think of you as a brand, but to think of your customers. And we, in the beginning, we had a, a look at the, at the global size of the gluing industry, so what kind of topics users may search. Um, and we also had like the organic search back then, 2019. It was more like one million visits a year for all the brands we had. Um, but we have seen that there are a lot of different potentials we never, we never covered because we never had the right content for. So we never had the content, so 
how to glue shoes, how to glue clothes, or even how to get rid of, of super glue, right? So probably it's also not just something what you should take into consideration when um, someone's looking for a product, but also if someone is applying a product and using a product, how you could serve your customer or help your customer to, to use your product right. And that's mainly the search opportunity, what we see in, in the six core markets we started. Um, now we are on 33 websites, more than 10 languages, because we have seen like this approach works quite, quite well for the major markets like Germany, US, Brazil, France, UK. But we also have seen that kind of the same questions customer ask themselves in other local markets. Nevertheless, it's not just a translation, and, and we will come to this later on, because it's more like a transcreation. So we have to understand the local needs of, of each user. Um, and sometimes it's because of cultural background that in Germany, people research different topics than in France or in Spain or even in, in North America. And when it comes to search, there are mainly like two approaches you can take. One approach would be to pay for the clicks. So classic SEA um, running Google ad campaigns where you have every time have to pay per click. So this is a channel which works for sure, but also a channel where you have always to invest budget to get the traffic. And what we started to do is also next to, to SEA, think of an SEO strategy, which we can adapt to various markets and where we can make sure that we reach the user when they are searching for a product, for problems, for needs, for a solution, what they probably want to fix or want to glue. And I think the biggest disadvantage of SEO is that you have to invest first in the strategy, in, in, in the content, and it takes you time. It takes you six to eight to 12 months until you see the, the results. But we do it now since 2019, so for three years, and we want to continue it for the next years and also onboard um, other, or other smaller markets because the, the bigger markets are already quite in a good shape. Um, and you will see some results, what we achieved during the three years and what kind of, of value we generated based on, on the traffic we acquire from search engines. And how this works will be presented by Peter. Yes. It's actually, it's actually, the slides are working. It's always great to see that people are, you know, like you, you are pulling up your phone, you're taking pictures. This is really good. This means the slides are good, I believe. Yeah. Like just I hope so. Us. Okay, so um, I'm going to, when we started our journey back then in, in 2018, actually, when we were pitching also, um, our websites didn't look like they do today. So what you, what you need to know is that the technical backbone of this whole exercise also has to fit to what you are doing in the end. And for us, this, this means that uh, we did a major relaunch in um, 2019 when we also started the, the approach, so at the same time, to make sure that also our website is fast enough to respond to, to the Google searches. And uh, we really thought about, okay, what is then the consumer intent when they are visiting our website? Because in the end, this is what counts, right? So if you have basically a website which is not answering the questions of the users, users will not stay longer on the website, they will not spend any time there, you will have a high bounce rate, and this then leads to Google interpreting this also as, nah, it's, it's not working. So what we saw also before when we took a look at analytics before we were relaunching the page was that we have a lot of um, consumers coming to our page, Patex, which is one of the, the, the biggest brands in, in Germany which we have, who of you doesn't know Patex? Hands up if you don't know Patex. Ah, really good. That's a good <laughs> feeling. That's a good feeling. Um, one of the biggest brands um, that, of course, if you type in Patex.de, you are searching for product information. So we had to be sure that we are covering this, of course, and we took an approach of taking a look at actually at the, the biggest e-commerce retailer in the world to make sure that our product pages are actually also then uh, going into the same direction as what they do because we believe that the product detail pages are super important for us. And also, we identified them together with Taneo that there are different search intents uh, behind. So we have, of course, things which are directly related to the products. So search intent, which is then about, I want to know more about um, this Patek Sekundenkleber, for example. But we saw also that it's more about guiding the people into the right direction when it comes to the products. Which product should I use if I want to glue metal to plastic or something like this? And in the end, also how to. So if I want to do a project, how can I actually realize this with the, with the Hengel products which we have? 
And all of this basically is all integrated into relaunching then this brand platform, which you also use then for other brands which are also in this approach. Now, the bigger question was then in an organization like Henkel, of course, um, which is a traditional company, how do you actually make sure that somebody understands that this is actually of value also? So how do you set this up in a way that also in the end, it's operating in a good way? And with the task of all those people, and there are over 100 people at Henkel who are working in this, but nobody's reporting to me regarding this one, right? So I have no reporting lines, but I have to convince people that this is actually in their interest um, to, to work with me on this program. First thing which we did is that we actually included SEO in our strategy, which is super important. Because if you do this, you also get the, the buy-in from top management to say, okay, this is something where we will invest into in the next few years, right? So what, what I tried to do in the, in the first part is, and you see here the consumer journey also, you see our mission which we have when it comes to digital transformation. For the consideration stage, it's about top three organic search ranks for 80% of relevant searches. And here we wrote claim share of Google search results. In real life, there's actually a number there, which we try to reach uh, at a certain point. And um, to have this basically secures us the investments then for the next following years. So if you have the commitment then from top management to do it, as also Matteo said, it's super important that you are doing this on a longer run. Because otherwise, if you don't see any results and you will see like marginal results like in the first months, in the first year, um, we wouldn't have had this, this success which we have now with that one. We started actually uh, with a lot less countries, but this is what we uh, currently do. So over 33 websites in over 20 countries, over 11 languages. And um, we always choose basically the countries based on return on invest. So we always compare. Uh, would it make sense now for the next three years to just do an SEA approach, so to pay Google directly to be in, in the top search results, let's say, in the uh, pay, paid search results? Or would it make more sense to invest in the next three years and then have basically this as a media value, which is then more than what we would have then uh, paid basically then, then to Google in, in this year? So it's about acquiring more traffic than with the traditional paid search strategy in the end different brands which you have there, and two different agencies which we're working with. Caneo is our search partner, making sure that we have the right search strategy, that we have the right topics which we write about. Um, so it's Content Fleet who is then responsible for writing the content according to what Claneo actually tells them in the end. This is how the project actually uh, evolved, and here we see that it's the draft version which we have <laughs> online. So we started in 2018 with pitching actually the agencies, which is super important. And then you see the, the uh, scope actually growing from 2019 to 2020 to 2021, all because we uh, saw, okay, it makes sense to invest more in this. We had positive results in there. For 2022, you can still see uh, Russia on this list. Uh, this is, of course, not the case anymore because Henkel decided not to invest in Russia anymore. When it comes then to our uh, process, which we are actually uh, applying, is that we have the, the strategy which comes from Caneo, that Caneo is also making sure that we have the technical audit, right? So while we are building the page and also now, also still, we find mistakes basically when it comes to the technical backbone, um, but everything under control. And uh, the content is written then by um, uh, Content Fleet and off-page SEO, again, done by uh, Caneo. If you take a short look into um, how is this actually then working when it comes to um, the content fleet part? What we make sure is that we have basically um, uh, one, one person of contact, which is me, when it comes to the global strategy. So I have one, one contact person on, on the other side um, when it comes to uh, talking basically on strategic level, what do we want to do, which countries do we want to have in. And uh, what we also have is um, then one agency, Content Fleet, who is coordinating then the editorial planning for each of the different countries and making sure that we are also writing the content in the different countries with native speakers. Super important because even if you have native speakers basically then living in Germany, they might be out of touch with the language un until then or might not know, you know what, what is the, the current status of, of things. So we always make sure that we have local speakers basically in the countries writing the content, everything centrally coordinated. How do we do this? Uh, we have a robust process on this. You can see a screenshot here from Microsoft Teams. This is an actual screenshot which, which we use where we are, let's say, app using the, the, the planner function in uh, Microsoft Teams, which is already distributed in our whole organization. 
to make sure that um, for each of the countries, you can see this here on, on the left side, they have an own channel. And what we then make sure is that um, here on the columns, we have the different process steps where this needs to go through. And we have then one card per article which needs to be then um, uh, approved or feedbacked or however you want to call it. And uh, this makes sure that we see who is actually working on this. And you can see it's a lot of persons because we have people there from um, the brands, from the categories, people from technical customer service who make sure that also what we are claiming there is uh, actually um, allowed to do and also able to do with our products. And uh, you can see that we always have the responsible agency who is then working on this um, in, in the columns to make sure that we have full transparency on when an um, article is locked or something, which gives me also then the chance to directly speak to certain pro persons and say, hey, we need some feedback for you on that article. Please make this happen, which is su super good. And this is working. What doesn't work, what we also know is just like email approvals does work because it's just like the mass which we are working with. So over 33 uh, websites, basically, um, times four people, which you can, which you can just uh, assume. It's just too much to just handle this all via email. So this, this is actually saving us a lot of time. Now back to Matthias, because what have we actually achieved so far with this? So let's have a look. Uh, you have seen in, in Peter's slides that we started the core markets of, of six markets with various brand websites. Um, and you definitely need time to achieve the rankings, to achieve additional traffic within search. So it, it was also really important to, to match the expectation of the upper management to say, hey, look, it's not like a paid channel where you put it on and you get traffic directly. It's more that you have invested into your website, invest into your website asset to make sure that, that you have traffic in the future. And when we have a look at the German website, for example, the German website, padex.de, was one of the first websites we started to work on. We started with a strategy to understand what kind of problems users have, what kind of content do we need, what kind of content do we need before someone is applying a glue product? Um, what is the, the questions they may have afterwards? And you see it, that the, the traffic is growing from month to month, and it's still growing even that we do not invest the same amount of content nowadays than we did in the beginning. So for sure, in the beginning, you invest much more time and effort in the content creation to get a content online, uh, and it takes you time until the content ranks. And you see uh, in the table on the right side uh, what kind of initial rank we had beginning of 2019, where we did not have any content at all. And you see now that we are ranking mainly in position one. So if you would take now your smartphone, go to Google and search for, I don't know, metal glue, fabric glue, glass glue, or how to, how to get rid of super glue from your fingers. Or the German. From your hair. <laughs> Sorry? You have to search for yeah, it's, German? Yeah, for sure. You should have a search in German. Yeah, you're right. Um, and we see that we are outranking even Amazon, right? So with the right content approach, you can even outrank Amazon because Amazon will never be able to get, let's say, in this niche where Padex is working with optimized content. So this is why we definitely, right now in Germany, when it comes to fixing, fixing something, to glue something, we are the best match for Google and the best match for users searching on Google. And you also see... In this case, the organic traffic from the beginning. So you see, we started in early 2019, and the first, let's say, uplift of 10 to 20 percent percent took us round about about six to nine months, right? So you see that it's a really, really long run. I compared always that it's not a sprint; it's more a marathon when you talk about SEO. But the content you create today will help you in the future, and the same for more, let's say, a more competitive market. I would say. The U.S. market, uh, where we had the same approach, we were researching the queries, the questions users may have, creating the right content, um, getting the content online, and then after a while you see how the traffic develops. Also, in the initial phase, we, we didn't have any rankings at all for the U.S. market, um, so there, this was more like a brand showroom, a brand website without any optimized content, and we started to create content, we started to, 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 to have a content hub on the website, and you see that all, now when you would search on Google.com with the US IP, you will see that we achieved a lot of number one rankings, or let's say at, at least top three rankings for all the relevant glue products of Loctite. And you also see how long it does 
how long it, it, it takes us. Uh, you see also the dip. The dip was the relaunch. So if you don't take care of your relaunch, probably this may happen. Uh, but we still fixed it because there are some technical issues we need to fix. But after the while, after we uploaded the content, you see the hockey stick, how this develops. And I would say the biggest advantage of SEO is no one can compete against us within several weeks or months, right? So if someone, let's say a competitor, wants to compete against us, they need to take the same journey we took the last three years, um, and it takes them a lot of time and effort. So even if we would say, hey, I don't know what happens, we stop all activities, I don't hope so, but if we would say we stop all activities, the traffic will stay there. And this is also something what we have seen um, during the, the, the corona pandemic. When it started, all the paid media activities got, got stopped for a lot of brands of us. And we have still seen that, that SEO and the organic traffic from Google is there and it's not, um, it, it's not something you will lose from one day to another. And what we have achieved is a media value of more than or nearly 2 million a year. So the, the, the media value represents the paid media we would need to invest in SEA if we, would get, want to, if, if we want to get the same traffic, right? So we save on a lead basis 2 million US dollars with the content we created or started to create in 2019. And even if we would stop it, we would still have the media value there and it will take quite a long time until a competitor will, will rank out us or rank out our positions because uh, we have, like, let's say, that the first mover achievement and we are on the top three positions. So let's get back to the key success factors. Maybe also like one word regarding the, the, the media value. This is what I meant like in the beginning. So the media value which we now have per year is a lot more than what we actually pay Craneo and content basically to do this on a yearly basis, right? So which means now it really makes sense then also to invest even more. We see also like in some markets we might have already saturation when it comes to, to the traffic. Um, but Matthias will show you also later on what we're planning then in, in the future. Um, key success factors for this one, and uh, this is like a slide, everybody who is now like taking, taking pictures, take, please take a picture of that slide because this is the important one here. This is why you came here for it, this, I would promise. I mean, we already saw that do deep SEO research is super important, so it's not only enough to know basically the keywords, but it's, you also have to know the search intent, to know basically what does the user actually want when he comes to the page to make sure that the, the content which he finds is actually matching their expectations. Then including SEO and strategy allows you to secure the, the um, money, the budget actually for the next coming years, which is super important for SEO because if you saw the curve, like if, if our management would have backed out after the first year, which I could have understood, right? Because it, that didn't look so promising in the first year, we wouldn't have this approach now. They would have said, say, Peter, it, it doesn't work, so why shouldn't we actually invest more in it? Choose the right partner, super important. As said, it's a long-term approach. Sometimes you don't know if the agency is actually good or not. In this case, I would actually advise you to get some um, a consultant on board if you are not sure about SEO or how to do SEO to make sure the, the agencies which you're working with are vetted. Um, create a robust process. We already talked about that one. And five is actually responding also to the strategy. Make content a priority, which means that we have the top management support who is also supporting us then in getting approvals done. Last but not least, make it fun. This is not something spiritual which I put in here, but uh, I had to find a way basically how to incentivize people around the world to work basically on this project without actually having any direct goal in the ambition dialogues for it or something like this. So I made sure that we have a bit of competition between the countries and also like the, the different categories which are approving the content, leading actually into a nice prize, a team building activity, which uh, they can have then in the end. And it's quite, quite nice to see Henkel people are quite passionate about uh, competing against each other. Uh, so therefore, this was actually quite, quite cool to see. Yeah. And the question is, what, what next? So what is the next step when you achieve top three rankings? You are mainly for 80% of your keywords in the top three. You rank for a lot of keywords uh, on the first position. So what is the next step to take? Um, we still see for the markets we started in 2019 that we have potentials when it comes to search result pages. So we said, okay, the first phase where the first three years where we said, okay, build a solid keyword strategy, create a con and optimize your website um, and increase your off-page signals. And the, the benefit of the content, which was more 
a guide content and how-to content was that a lot of, of users, a lot of forum users also link to the content. So as long as the content has a benefit for someone who is searching for a solution for its problem, his problem, then it makes sense um, to create this content and get the backlinks. So this was like the first three years. For some markets, for some countries, we are starting right now with the right content. So it's always that we take new countries into the scope because we see there is potential and we can build on existing, existing know-how. And then the second phase, which starts this year and ho hopefully will follow the next two to three years, is also to engage your users within the top three. So to make sure we have the right imaginary, to make sure we have videos, to, to make sure we have graphics. So everything which makes the, the user experience more appealing to a topic, to a content itself, instead of just having plain content. And when you have a look on the top, uh, top 10 results on Google, that's now for the German query, a super glue, you see we rank on position one. So there's nothing we can achieve, but we see that we still have paid activities on marketplaces, right? So we could also think of, we rank already on SEO for, for the first, on the first position, but we still see uh, within the top 10, there are bigger, bigger, uh, bigger retailers and bigger brands like Hornbach, Kaufland, Amazon. So to make sure you optimize your products on those marketplaces, on those retailers, and also to have a look if there are any paid activities you can run on Amazon, on Kaufland, on, um, on, on, on Hornbach or whatever. And that's like the next step. From a, from a digital strategy. And also, when we have a look, if someone's looking for how to uh, glue glass, that we see, hey, look, there's a lot of search volume for this. Uh, we have already a lot of traffic, so one third of the traffic, or more or less one third of the traffic we already capture. But we still see that there are competitors ranking within a video integration. So what we see for the adhesives industry is a lot of users are looking for how to apply a specific glue. So how to glue glass, metal, wood, whatever. And we see then that when someone's looking for how to glue your shoe, that there is a video and for sure that's the wrong product because that's the product of the competitor. And that's like the next step we want to tackle to say, hey, let's create videos for YouTube, optimize them on YouTube as the second biggest search engine and make sure that our video has the chance to rank within the search result pages. So ideally, we will be on position one and have one of the uh, integrations or video integrations from YouTube with one of our products. And that's mainly the next step because the video also can be really, uh, really appealing to the user when they come to our brand website, right? So we do not just have the content there, we also have the application in a short two to three minute video, how to show, or how to show the users um, to use your product and to apply your product. And that's more or less the next step we take for the markets we already are in top positions, and for the markets which, which we ramp up in this global SEO program, we are at the beginning, so it takes us time to be there where we want to be uh, in the future. But that's, that's what, what we would see when it comes to search engine optimization, that you first think of your customer, um, the search results itself, to bring your website in the top position, and then also to have a look what kind of brand equity you can or brand real estate, you can get additionally on a search query page, on a search result page, and that's what we are heading for. Thank you very much, and if you have further questions, feel free to write Peter or me, or ask us your questions.